Hello, my friends. We are back with another episode of the Inspired to Style House Renovation Series. Last week, we talked about cabinetry. This week, it's all about floors, tile, and countertops. Plus, I'll give you a first look at our newly renovated guest bath. Let's go. Now, if you've ever built a house or renovated a house, you know that there's kind of this cycle that we all go through. There's tremendous excitement on the front end where you just have all these hopes and aspirations and dreams of what the house is going to look like when it's finished. And then you get into the weeds of the process of selecting materials and finishes, and there comes the overwhelm. Walking into a showroom and looking at thousands of tile options, trying to figure out what hardwood floors or engineered floors or laminate floors you should choose for your space. And then the countertops. How do I choose a countertop and why is it so doggone expensive? Well, you know that it's overwhelming, but I'm gonna show you what we selected for this house and I'm going to also impart a few nuggets that will help you if you ever find yourself in the situation of having to choose these elements for your own project. floors, countertops. These are some of the things that we in the industry consider hard finishes. We call them hard finishes because it's really hard and really expensive to change out or remove these elements once they're installed. So it's really important to get it right the first time. In fact, I'm curious, have you ever had to choose these elements for your own home project? Let me know, take a minute to let me know in the comments below and let me know whether your experience was a positive experience or negative experience. Being an interior designer does not mean that I go at it alone. Not only do I have the privilege of working with an incredible team of creatives, but on each project, we consult with experts in various fields to make sure that we can really make our vision for a space become a reality. And that leads me to my first tip for today. Seek wise counsel. Notice I didn't say ask a random person for advice. By wise counsel, I mean someone who not only has a good eye, but someone who's also very familiar with the characteristics and makeup of the products they're recommending to you. Since Justin, our tile and flooring expert, is based in Shreveport, Louisiana, which is about four hours away from Baton Rouge, we worked via phone call and Skype as we reviewed the initial plans and drawings for our house design concept. We explained to Justin what we were trying to accomplish not only visually but also in the way that my family would be able to live in the house and experience the products on a daily basis and based on that information he was able to point us in the right direction and guide us to the right products that we should consider using in our house design. We also asked Justin for his help with recommendations on flooring options. Although this looks like genuine hardwood it's actually an engineered hardwood product. What makes it it's so unique is that it has a three quarter inch piece of real unfinished wood on top so that means that this floor can be stained and sealed whatever color we want because it's an engineered wood it was much more cost effective than real hardwood and it would allow us to put this material on the lower and upper level of the home winner winner chicken dinner with our wood floor selection made we could turn our attention back to selecting the perfect tile for this house so we headed out on a fun road trip to Shreveport to make our final picks. Here's 
designer tip number two. When choosing tile, base your selections around one feature piece. Understand that there should be a tension between the elements that sets one thing up as the clear star of the show with the rest of the elements serving as supporting cast. This careful balance between all of the elements in a room is what really takes the space to the next level. When selecting our tile for this home, I wanted to choose classic elements that I could turn on their heads and use in an interesting way. Like that marble lookalike tile for our kitchen backsplash or the small scale mosaic for the laundry room walls. When considering the type of countertop material I wanted to use in this project, I had three things in mind. Livability, style, and cost. Our team worked with our local stone yard to describe our needs for the project, narrow down our options, and ultimately select slabs that would work for the house. For the kitchen island and perimeter cabinets, we chose a pure white quartz because it checked all of our boxes. Low maintenance, simple enough in style to support the movement of the backsplash tile, and it fit within our budget. For the pantry, laundry, and master bath coffee area, we chose a honed Misty Carrera, which believe it or not, works in all of these spaces and it even takes on a different personality depending on which room it's in. If you think we were excited to see the cabinets go in, you cannot imagine the sheer joy and excitement we felt watching the tile being installed over the next several weeks. So I'm sure you're beginning to see all the goodness that's coming to you with the reveal of this house. It is an incredible transformation, if I do say so myself. The cabinets are in, the tile is in, the floors are in, countertops are in. Next up is hardware and lighting, the jewelry of the space. And I can't wait to share with you what we selected, why we selected it, and to give you some valuable tips on how you can choose the right hardware and lighting for your project. 